Hello everyone, welcome to Dakshina E Classroom program. So up to last lecture we saw that how in different cases uh, when some changing flux is linked to a conductor to a coil some EMF is induced either like that may be the area of the coil is changing the angle between magnetic field and uh, uh, area vector is changing or sometime even the like magnetic field is changing I mean like in either way whenever there is some changing magnetic flux is linked EMF is induced in the uh, conductor or coil is it so let's see one more case actually so EMF induced in a EMF induced in a rotating disc here we saw one case actually I gave you one example that if there is let's say magnetic field and this is a ring and some magnetic field is present in this complete space B so now if this ring is rotating about this axis passing through its center is it perpendicular to its plane in this situation we saw the EMF induced was zero and you know the reason because in that case yes flux is definitely there through the ring but this is not changing it's constant here b is constant so the flux linked is there with the ring but it's not changing and that's why in this case the emf induced in the ring is zero right okay now i have another case emf induced in a rotating disc is it so here instead of ring let's say this is the space where i have uniform magnetic field present so this is the space and uniform magnetic field b is present okay and we have one disc also here so place like this and this is a disc conducting disc of uh, you can take its radius r and now this is also rotating about same i mean like just like that way with angular speed omega about an axis passing through uh, center perpendicular to its plane disc rotate about axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane axis perpendicular to its plane so you can see it here so now my question is that whether there will be some emf induced in this case uh, across any point in the disk or not because here you can see in similar case only the difference is this is a ring and this is a disk so there no in EMF was induced and the answer for this is yes there will be EMF induced in this case and let me tell you why that will be so in this case what is happening just imagine similar situation here actually let's say EMF is uh, uh, sorry magnetic field is present instead of ring I am taking some uh, like wheel sort of like where some spokes are there just like this okay so now in this case actually just forget about in this ring there will be no emf is it but these spokes so if these spokes are removed uh, these are spokes is it spokes i don't know the spelling exactly so if this uh, like uh, this system is rotating in this situation you can say let's say this is length is l angular speed omega then you can just imagine this rod this will be one spoke will be just like one rod one rod is there and which is having angular speed omega and length l and magnetic field b so emf will be induced in each spoke emf in each spoke can be written as that is equal to half b omega l square i hope you remember emf in a rotating rod 
so exactly in the same manner i can say the emf will be there in this and in each case there will be emf so if it is rotating like this then the polarity will be like that is it so i can write this and here also there will be emf here also there will be emf here also here also and in each spoke and if i ask you the emf or potential difference between center and periphery of disk is b omega l square by 2 because here like n number of spokes are there then also like these will be just like n uh, like parallel uh, and cells are connected in parallel in that case the emf is simply equal to the emf of one cell so i hope you understand this part then i can write exactly in the same manner this disk can be considered as a system having infinite number of spokes is it so that's why if i take any one spoke is it between like this center and the periphery of the disk so the emf induced in this spoke is again b omega if its radius is r square by 2 and this can be system can be considered like infinite spokes emf between center and periphery of the disk is given by so emf or potential difference between center of disk and its periphery is given by b omega r square by 2 so this is emf so you can see in this case yes there will be emf and this system you can consider disk can be considered as a system having infinite number of spokes is it so you can read it uh, here like i hope you understood this part i'm raising it so a conducting disk is equivalent to a ring having infinite number of spokes so that way we can write yes there will be emf and so i hope by this time like you can calculate the emf or potential difference generated in any system whether flux is changing emf like uh, I mean like flux is changing and that can change either by changing magnetic field by changing area or by changing the angle between magnetic field and area and even like uh, we saw another was motional EMF so that like their magnetic like the uh, magnetic field lines are cut by the conductor and that's why there is EMF okay I want to mention one more point about motional EMF here so in this case actually i wrote the relation emf induced is equal to b v l that was in actually scalar form but sometimes we need it in vector form form also so in that case if uh, let's say this is a magnetic field mag uniform length l and velocity and magnetic field b is present in this case in vector form this emf can be written as b bar dot this is l bar cross v bar so this automatically consider if uh, it's moving at some angle let's say theta this is the velocity vector l will be the length of this you can take in this direction so then l cross v will be like inward and that will be along parallel to magnetic field so this will come simply equal to b v l and this is a scalar triple product of three vectors and this is also can be written as emf is equal to b bar cross l bar dot v bar or this is a uh, all right so these two are same things actually you can write it this way or that way that is exactly same thing by property of like vector this a if i take this is a bar this is b bar then we can write it b bar dot a bar also so this is also equal to v bar dot b bar dot l cross l bar or it's also equal to 
vvar cross bvar dot lvar so it's all like same thing so you can write the expression in vector form also so sometime if some angle is there it will be easy to easy for you go with to go with this relation so this is all about emf produced in a conductor or in a coil uh, like in different cases motional emf or emf due to changing the like uh, area magnetic field and angle between them let's see the next topic now okay so the next topic is induced electric field in a time varying magnetic field let's consider this space we have a magnetic field pointed inward and its magnitude is changing so dv by dt some constant k is it maybe in this may be positive it is increasing or maybe negative also if it is decreasing in both cases are possible there is nothing wrong in either case we can like so the point is if uh, this is the situation where time varying magnetic field is present and some conductor is also there so we have seen in this case also emf will be induced if we go for it from the faraday's law then we can understand because the flux through the coil of flux through the conductor will be changing and that will result in emf i told you the explanation of motional emf from one more like a uh, concept and that was the force on a charge carrier or force on an electron or charge uh, due to motion in magnetic field so when a conductor move in magnetic field with the conductor the electrons in this conductor also moving with the electric field and electron means charge particle have some velocity and magnetic field so we see some force is acting on those charge particle and that pushes those electrons to one side and that result in emf and we call it motional emf and we understood this with the like in terms of faraday's law also because flux is changing or magnetic field lines are uh, being cut by the conductor and that result in magnetic field or uh, that result in emf next point is here in this situation you can see the conductor is at rest is it so here the conductor is at rest but magnetic field is present and it's changing so now conductor at rest what i can say that means the charged particles or electrons which are like uh, primarily responsible which move actually flow so i can definitely say the electrons in the conductor will be also at rest so when conductor means charge part uh, sorry inside a conductor means charge particle is at rest then whether magnetic field is uh, constant or magnetic field like uh, is uh, changing we know it when charge particle or electron is at rest then magnetic field can't apply a force on that charge particle i hope you are understanding it i mean here conductor at rest implies electrons in the conductor are also at rest right conductor at rest that means electrons inside the conductor are also at rest and this implies a magnetic field cannot apply a force on a charge particle at rest so the question here arises then if electron at rest magnetic field is not applying any force on this uh, electron then who is pushing why the current is flowing in this conductor why what is responsible for the flow what is responsible for the emf we understood one point like faraday's law flux is changing that we understood it's okay but we are trying to look at it from different point just like we saw in case of motional emf that in motional emf charge particle uh, means uh, conductor moving means charge particle are also moving charge particle having velocity magnetic field they will be like experiencing some magnetic portion because of that they like uh, 
push or run towards one side and that result in emf but similar explanation is not here actually because conductor at rest to me charge particles means electrons are at rest and magnetic field whether it's constant or varying it cannot apply a force on a charge particle on a electron when it is at rest so then arises something like means something else should be there that result in the flow of electron and there we uh, saw the concept of induced electric field in a time varying magnetic field so that means actually in this situation when time varying magnetic field is present in that case it generate it induces some electric field and that pushes those electrons and because of that emf is generated i hope you are understanding so now the point is then the question was why emf is there still why electrons why current is there flowing in this conductor when like uh, electron can't experience force due to a magnetic field whether it's constant or changing in th that situation there is another thing and that is induced electric field so here actually a time varying magnetic field create or induces one electric field and that pushes those electrons and because of that we are getting current in this loop or emf in this loop and let's get the relation expression for that induced electric field okay i will write the property of those induced electric field also so here the point is the answer to all these question is that some induced electric field is present due to time varying magnetic field that result in current in this conductor emf in this conductor force on the electrons in this conductor so this can be written as actually the emf is equal to minus of d phi by dt and this is also equal to here uh, emf we can write the relation it's uh, if e is the electric field dot dl integral minus this so i can write e is equal to minus of d phi by dt that is by faraday's law and the relation between electric field and uh, emf this is emf means potential difference and this e is for electric field so i can write this is e dot dl is equal to also emf so by equating these two emfs so by equating these two emf i can write this implies this minus minus sign simply gets cancelled integral e dot dl over closed loop is equal to d phi by dt and here in this situation we can see area is not changing so it's basically can be written as d by dt of b into a means magnetic field into area and this over any closed loop if i am taking this is a so that it's e dot dl means length is 2 pi r where r is the radius of this uh, loop or like ring i can consider ring is it and this is equal to what this is area multiplied by db by dt and this implies e is equal to a divided by 2 pi r multiplied by db by dt now in this case here a will be the area through which magnetic field is passing or magnetic flux is linked area a is the area which magnetic flux or magnetic field lines are passing that area like uh, here if i say definitely it's a uh, same area and uh, so here in this situation i can write a will be simply equal to pi r square but in some cases it will be like different another case here i just uh, these uh, electric field magnetic field lines should be also in some 
circular reason actually so this is the situation in that case if i'm substituting it here then i'm getting e is equal to this is pi pi gets cancelled one r gets cancelled it's coming out to be r by 2 into db by dt so we got this expression that is electric field and the thing is this electric field is different because you can see here when current is flowing in this conductor in a loop some heat will be produced means work is done so if electric field is just like normal electrostatic electric field we know in that case because electric field is conservative so work done in a closed loop is zero but here we can see heat is produced means work done in a closed loop is non-zero that implies this induced electric field is different from electrostatic electric field and this induced electric field is non-conservative in nature right so let me write the property of these electric field lines so here about these electric field lines these electric field is non-conservative in nature right this electric field is non-conservative because here you can say as in a closed loop work done is non-zero right another thing here we know electrostatic electric field does not form closed loop but here it's forming a closed loop right so this electric field form a closed loop so it's different from normal electric field and here one more thing actually here the electric field calculation we will do for symmetric i mean like circular or cylindrical reason of magnetic field remaining part we will not do the calculation here we it's not in our syllabus actually you can take uh, consider because there things will be like a little bit complex it's like uh, straightforward otherwise like uh, the uh, electric field lines it will be like the same may, may be different actually so we will write here the electric field will be will calculate for circular or cylindrical reason of time varying magnetic field so formula we got this expression i will solve some more problems i will tell you exactly how we can exactly up, uh, get this expression but i hope like you understood that why how this is coming so the point was that when like a conductor is placed at rest in time varying magnetic field still emf and current was flowing in the conductor and if we look at the explanation of this phenomena at the charge particle or electron is at a level then we see there is no force then why still current is flowing in the conductor and that can be explained by the uh, you know, this concept of induced electric field in a time varying magnetic field so definitely we can say in a time varying magnetic field some electric field is generated and that result in actually uh, current or emf inside the conductor and that way we can understand this part also so here we have new electric field and it's non-conservative in nature it can form closed loop and this is your induced electric field in a time varying magnetic field okay let me do this uh, all calculation for a cylindrical reason so i have here this is a cylindrical reason only where magnetic field is present in this cylindrical reason now i am taking one conductor like this so this is a small radius and let's say 
this radius is capital R right so this is a conductor now for this situation I can write my like electric field so exactly E dot DL integral minus equal to minus d phi by dt equal to minus of area times db by dt and this implies e dot dl will be what into 2 pi r area here through this like i mean like the conductor through which we are interested in calculating electric field we need to find the flux through that reason only because magnetic field is present up to here but we will see only flux because this is the flux linked to this conductor so this i can write area is pi r square into db by dt and solving we are getting this expression r by 2 into db by dt okay one thing is this and another thing is outside the cylindrical reason what it mean means here your magnetic field is present in this region if i am taking a conductor which is actually lying outside this so this is now my conductor what do you think like it's not even lying this conductor is not even lying inside the magnetic field still there will be uh, like uh, induced electric field in this region and the answer is yes is it so these electric field lines are induced even in a region where there is no magnetic field present is it but yes and like in this region there must be magnetic field if there is no magnetic field anywhere then definitely there will be no electric field right but if, if this is the situation then even here even here 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 also there will be magnetic uh, like induced electric field so let me explain you this and then you will understand the point that was I was and that I was trying to tell you about the area so here if this is the reason so let me write again here this radius is capital R and this is small r then here and uh, it's same thing actually otherwise because we have written that radius this way so in this situation i will write integral e dot dl minus d phi by dt equal to minus of area multiplied by db by dt now see here what is this flux so flux is linked only through this area not through this area is it so that's why here i will write this will be area will be like minus pi capital r square into db by dt and this will be like minus i can cancel i can write it here this implies uh, minus e dot and now here dl will be like for this small element so it's like 2 pi r and that is minus this is a uh, area pi r square capital r square into db by dt minus minus gets cancelled this implies e and this r square by 2 r into db by dt so here you can see the expression for E is coming out to be different here inside the reason you can write E is directly proportional to R outside the reason of electric field E is uh, inversely proportional to R. So if I draw like uh, for this reason let's say this is the reason of magnetic field then inside as you are going away from the R like center your electric field strength will keep on increasing so you can write here electric field lines will be like this let me draw it with different colors i mean like where electric field lines density is higher is it electric field strength will be higher like this i'm not able to draw it uniformly and outside the region 
as you are going away the field density will keep on decreasing like this way I mean just comparison you should uh, like see here here it's more closer here it's more closer compared to this so as you are going away then density will be keep on decreasing another point here just I like uh, direction of electric field so see here okay I hope this electric field lines are clear up to here means strength where it will be higher field lines will be more closer so this is about let me tell you about the direction of electric field here so i hope you can already get the direction of current is it how we will get the direction that i told you whether field through this region is increasing or decreasing then by Lange law the induced current will flow in such a way that it opposes the cause means the changing flux which is creating that current so let me write for this example this case let me explain you the direction of electric field so in this situation just to make you understand i am drawing this is same my this is the conductor in this case let's say if db I mean like B is increasing okay so that means DB by DT will be some positive K some constant in this situation flux is involved and it's increasing so what will happen the current will induce in a manner such that it opposes so now you see if the current is clockwise then it will also produce the flux inward and that will increase this flux further so it means that is not possible if the current is anti-clockwise like this then induced uh, magnetic field will be outward and this magnetic field is inward and you can see this magnetic field increasing the uh, induced magnetic field will be outward that will try to decrease this and that way it's opposing so in this situation if b is uh, increasing then i can write the current in conductor will be anti clockwise current in this conductor will be anti clockwise so here the current will flow actually this way means current will flow this way so here we can see the current is flowing in the direction of motion of positive charge particles and means force on the positive charge particle is acting in the direction of current so electric field lines will be in the direction of current and tangential at every point so this is the direction of electric field lines or electric field at any point so electric field electric field will be along in the direction of current means current uh, along the current but, but tangential at every point means electric field will be like in the direction of current but tangential not along simply like uh, uh, and like it cannot be just simply like uh, this way is it at any point if you just see then it will be tangent to this conductor right so it will not be like current is clockwise uh, like anti clockwise so magnetic uh, like electric field will be also this way it will not be opposite to that but tangential direction will be there so that way you can get the electric field induced electric field its direction magnitude and all that depending on the situation let's see some application of this concept okay see uh, one problem based on that induced electric field concept 
so here we have a thin non conducting ring of uh, so this is a thin non conducting ring of mass m and uh, carrying a charge q so mass of the ring is m and charge it carry q and let's say its radius is r Noted uh, at the initial moment ring was at rest and no magnetic field was present then uniform magnetic field was switched on initially there was no magnetic field then some magnetic field is switched on and uh, uh, like switched on which was perpendicular to the plane of the ring so magnetic field is directed inward perpendicular to the plane of this ring and uh, increasing with the time so dv by dt is equal to some k where some constant find the angular velocity of the ring as function of Okay, so you are asked to find once the electric field is switched on find the angular velocity of the ring as function of uh, k so first thing is see here magnetic field is increasing so the current should induced in a manner such that that opposes it so we can see the current will be like this way is it it will be flowing uh, sorry because here the ring is non-conducting so current can't flow in it but this ring can rotate because of the force due to the induced electric field on this charge particle. So the direction of electric field will be this way, it's tangential and this way we can see. It will try to rotate the ring in this manner so that current can flow in this direction and a magnetic field is induced in outward. Means ring will not stay here at rest ring will rotate and that rotation of ring will result in flow of charge and some current and that will produce magnetic field outward so it, in this manner it will try to oppose the increasing magnetic flux due to the increasing magnetic field so next point is what is the angular velocity of this ring right so first thing is i can get the expression for magnetic uh, electric field is it so electric field here we can write the induced electric field so e can be written as directly it's a what i can write it's e dot dl it's 2 pi r is equal to pi r square into db by dt and this implies e is equal to pi pi gets cancelled r gets cancelled it's r by 2 into db by dt is k so this is electric field now if i take small element of this ring so if i take small element of this ring so on this element there is some charge dq so the force on small element of ring right this df can be written as what that is equal to e into dq this is df correct and e is r k by 2 multiplied by dq then torque on this is small element so torque on this element tau can be written as again d tau is equal to r into df and this is r square k by 2 into dq if i integrate it over complete reason 0 to tau 0 to q then tau i am getting its r square k q by 2 and this is equal to i into alpha i is the moment of inertia and this implies this is equal to i is its ring so it's m r square into alpha and alpha we need actually okay uh, alpha so this implies alpha we are getting r square gets cancelled it's k q divided by 2 m we got alpha and which is constant you can see then angular velocity omega is equal to what omega naught which is 0 plus alpha t so omega naught is 0 and alpha is k q by 2 m into t this is the answer for angular velocity of ring as function of k or it will be also a function of t so this is about this problem 
simple thing we calculated electric field then we considered small element we got the force on that element multiplied by this distance we got the torque about this point net torque we calculated equal to i alpha we got alpha and alpha hits coming out to be constant so we can write omega is equal to omega naught initial velocity which is zero plus alpha into t and we are getting this answer so that is about this problem okay see next problem so a line charge lambda is wound around an insulating disc of mass capital m and radius capital r so this is a insulating disc of mass capital m and radius capital r around the edge of this disc a, this blue color is a like a line charge of charge density lambda is wrapped around it wound around it okay and uh, the and the, which is suspended horizontally as shown in figure and so that it is free to rotate in the cent uh, free to rotate and this disc is free to rotate in the central region of radius small a uh, central region this is the central region only of this complete disc reason is smaller there is a uniform magnetic field b naught pointing upward so uniform magnetic field this is uniform magnetic field b naught present only in this smaller region remember that now the magnetic field is switched off which causes the disc to rotate find the angular speed with this the disc will start rotating so initially there is uniform magnetic field right remember that because field is not changing that's why when field was present disc will not rotate because electric field will be produced only when there is change in magnetic field or changing magnetic field is linked right but here constant magnetic field so that's why initially disc will not rotate but once this uh, magnetic field is switched off then it will experience some change in flux and electric field and that will result in some angular velocity or rotation of this uh, disc with some angular velocity so i hope you're understanding that why and how things are happening and why the disc will rotate next question is we need to find that angular speed okay so let me write uh, the once the magnetic field will be switched off then it will be changing in some time is it so let's say the change in magnetic field on switching off in dt time can be written or expressed as dv by dt right all right charge density is lambda so first thing is electric field induced electric field in reason or you can write ring of radius capital r because remember that here only lambda charge density is present so the field should be calculated at this point not this point this point this point this point right so we need to calculate field at this point so we that's why i am in the induced electric field in the ring of radius capital r so that can be written as e dot dl that is 2 pi r is equal to area into db by dt and this can area is here pi a square into db by dt because remember that magnetic field is linked only in the circular central region of radius small a so i am getting e is equal to a square by 2r multiplied by db by dt i got this is the electric field if change in magnetic field is db by dt then what is the force and torque i can calculate so force on ring is it for that again i can take small element or i then i can directly write uh, instead of going for force we can directly torque on the disc so tau can be written as this is a 2 pi r into lambda this is the charge multiplied by electric field multiplied by radius clear so this is tau and 2 pi r square multiplied by this a square by 2 r 
multiplied by db by dt and this tau can be written as what it can be written as dl by dt where dl is the change in angular momentum of disk and remember that initially disk is at rotate so what is the initial angular momentum it's zero so dl is the change in angular momentum on switching off of magnetic field so first thing is if i simply cancel this dt dt then i am getting here and one r also two gets cancelled this is pi r a square into db is equal to what dl and dl is equal to l final minus l initial l final it's you can write disk so it's moment of inertia mr square by 2 multiplied by omega minus l initial is 0 clear and this db change in magnetic field will be equal to what b naught minus 0 is it so this implies pi r a square into b naught is equal to m r square into omega by 2 we can one r gets cancelled and this implies omega is equal to what multiplied by 2 pi a so this is 2 pi a square into b naught divided by this is m and one r will be there m into r this is the answer with which this disk will start rotating so what we calculated we considered the change in magnetic field is db by dt dt is the small interval in which it is field is completely switched off all right so this is the situation then we calculated electric field got this torque by calculating force or you can straight forward direct so charge multiplied by e will be force multiplied by distance from the center that is torque and tau can be written as dl by dt 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 on both side i could cancel simply so this is coming out to be dl and change in momentum angular momentum is this and simplifying it we are getting the expression for the angular speed with which this disk will start rotating once the elect, uh, magnetic field is switched off so this is the like application it's good concept actually induced electric field i hope by this time you are clear with the concept you try more problem on it and here we can see i already told you that even when there is no magnetic field present in that reason also there is induced electric field let's see the next application next application is basically uh, it's same thing faraday's law changing magnetic flux and all that but we will try to look at it from different point of view and we are going to see that is inductance so let me define what is inductance and all that Okay, so the next topic is self-inductance and let's see what it is actually. So we have seen up to here that when some magnetic field is linked to a coil or any conductor or loop and wire anything like that, some flux is linked to that. Okay, so let me consider this is a uh, coil having some let's say n number of turns and its radius is r. And uh, so like this is some wire carrying current I. So it's flowing like this. Is it? Now what will happen? So when some uh, like current is flowing in the wire, is it? Here in this wire, the current will be flowing this. We can see some magnetic field will be induced in this reason. This magnetic field multiplied by area, I can say there will be magnetic flux. So when a current is flowing in the coil means magnetic field is there implies magnetic field is produced So 
current is flowing in the coil itself. Remember that here there is no external outside magnetic field is not present. This is a coil carrying like uh, we can say n number of tons and can be one also, no problem in that too also. So carrying some current and then magnetic field will be there multiplied by area, some flux will be also there. And this is all happening. Magnetic field is also due to the current in coil itself. Remember that that is important here. Field or current should not be from uh, like other coil or from outside system. It should be in the coil itself. So now what we have seen is here. See, so seeing that flux is there. If uh, that flux is changing, how it can change by changing here? If I just simple case, I can take it changing current. So if current is there, then what will happen actually here? In this coil also, flux will change and if flux is changing, then what will happen? Exactly just by normal Faraday's law, this coil will also try to oppose that change in flux, right? And that way, it will also induce some EMF. So now here we can see this coil is having some property which is trying to oppose the change in flux linked to the coil due to current in itself, right? This property we measure in terms of self-inductance or we call that as inductance and measure uh, like in terms of Henry. Henry is the unit because Henry discovered this property of coil, okay? So here we understood this part. So now when changing current of when I write current is changing that will result in change in flux and this coil will oppose that change in flux by inducing EMF in such a way that opposes the change in flux. So if I write Let's suppose let the flux linked to the coil due to current in itself. So I can write pi is the flux, let's say that is pi. And I can definitely write because magnetic field in this coil will be proportional to I. So I can write this phi will be proportional to I. I is the current in the coil. Right? And this proportionally constant. That means phi proportionally constant is L into I. So this proportionally constant L is called as self inductance of coil. Right? L actually measure that opposing property and here we can write if I differentiate it that EMF induced is minus of D phi by D T equal minus of L di by This L is called self-inductance. Unit of inductance. Inductance or self-inductance both are same actually. It's measured in Henry H. Here, this inductance is a property of the coil 
in the sense it is a property of coil right which opposes and uh, the change in flux itself that property is measured in terms of or defined in terms of in the tense or measured this coil is called in the tense coil is is inductor is a geometrical property or i can say inductance depends on geometrical properties i will like it uh, means it depends on shape and size of coil right it depends on shape and size of coil in that case it in that case it's not like that when current is linked to the coil then only inductance will be there even when there is no current in the coil still the coil will have that opposing property it will still have inductance so you where whether or uh, even when no current simple thing is we have one coil we can understand it this way actually that when some current is linked to the coil magnetic field may be there some magnetic flux will be there through the coil due to the current in itself right so this flux is there and we know if current is changing the what will happen flux through the coil will change but by that property of like faraday's law we can say it will try to oppose that change in flux so it will try to induce some emf or we can say the property is with which it try to oppose the flux that property the measuring we are defining that as inductance of the coil and we calculated so we flux we got its proportional to i and this proportionally constant remove and we will see i will calculate this value l we will see it's it's completely geometrical parameter geometrical property So L depends on basically like its geometric environment. But so flux we got and we get the amount is this, and this L quantity is termed as L potential. We can see it's not depending on I, right? Even when current is not there, still inductance will be there. Inductance it's a scalar quantity. It's measured in Henry, and we can write it's a positive parameter. Inductance L is not a like uh, positive negative. It's only positive parameter, positive quantity. So L, you can write it is positive quantity. So here I can write L a positive quantity. So this is about inductance. Let me show you the calculation of inductance or self-inductance. How we can calculate the inductance of a coil. So let me first erase this part. Okay. So let's consider here the solenoid. So we have the solenoid. L is the total length. Cross-sectional area is uh, pi r square. A if r is the radius. And uh, number of turns per unit length is n. Okay. So if r is the current flowing in the solenoid, then we can write magnetic field. Magnetic field in the solenoid that can be written as v is equal to mu naught into ni. I hope you have seen this. You must be remembering this really 
design. I'm writing I, so mu naught and I n is the number of times per unit length, mu naught per availability, I is the current. Then flux linked to one coil, uh, flux linked to one, I mean like uh, term, that can be written as phi is equal to what? B into A, that is mu naught and I multiplied by phi R square. Total flux linked to solenoid because solenoid has n number of turns. Uh, small n is the number of turns per unit length. Total turns will be n into L. This can be written as phi net, or I am writing it simply phi. This is equal to mu naught and I into pi r square multiplied by n into n. This implies phi, we are getting mu naught n square into L into pi r square into i. Clear? And this can be written as what? L into i. This implies L is equal to mu naught n square into i into pi r square. And this is the self interface of the coil of the solid ion. So we got self inductance, self inductance of solid ion. So this is also the approach, even if something else, another system is given to you, we will do what? We will calculate the magnetic field, we will calculate the total flux through that. And phi we will write phi is equal to L i and L will be your EMF. Oh sorry, L is the self inductance of that coil. So we are getting L is equal to mu naught n square uh, into L. If A, I can write pi r square or A, I can write A also. This and here it's depending on mu naught is also there. So that's why L also depends on the medium in which coil is placed. So that L also depends on that. Right, so this is all about self-inductance. Let's continue from here onward.